Catholic Church is increasingly becoming the target of vandals. Crosses, statues, stained glass, and edifices have been broken, marred by graffiti, and burned at parishes across the U.S. In New York City this summer, police arrested a woman for toppling two statues at Our Lady of Mercy Church in Queens and repeatedly slamming them to the ground until they broke. The Cathedral Basilica of the Immaculate Conception in Denver suffered vandalism last week. Red spray paint covered the front doors and edifice of the cathedral. A statue of St. John Paul II was also damaged. The USCCB says that three churches, including the cathedral, have been targeted and vandalized in just the last two months in the Archdiocese of Denver. And just days ago in Los Angeles, the facade of St. Peter's Italian Catholic Church was vandalized with red paint. Volunteers quickly jumped in to clean it up. Catholic images are also being targeted at the legislative level. The state of California has made several moves to remove images and the legacy of St. Junipero Serra. Dr. Matthew Bunsen, executive editor of EWTN News and our Washington bureau chief, is here to explain. Uh, Muncy, uh, St. Junipero Serra is one of the founding fathers of the church in Latin America and what became the state of California. That's right. But because of the controversy surrounding the historical treatment of Native Americans, legislators and activists in California have been working very actively to erase his image and legacy from churches, parks, and schools. Fortunately, uh, church leaders and scholars are standing up to defend his true legacy. When you look at Junipero Serra, I think it's very important to put it in context, the time that he lived. The history and treatment of the indigenous peoples of California is complex, controversial, and often painful. Serra was a part of the colonial efforts of Spain coming out here to the Americas. He was front and center in that. St. Junipero Serra, a devout Franciscan, came to the Americas to proclaim the gospel and bring souls to Christ. But it was two things. It was the churches, the missions, and you had the government aspect of it, which was the presidios. Presidios, or military forts, housed Spanish soldiers. Scholars say Serra saw native populations, particularly women, being abused by the soldiers and others living at the presidios, which prompted him to move the mission away from the dangers. But he didn't stop there to protect native communities. He goes to Mexico City with a, a lengthy mem memorandum of something like 8,000 words insisting on the observance of what we would today call the human rights or the civil rights of the native population. So Sarah was a great defender of the rights of these people whom he loved and wanted to see saved, eternally saved. Pope Francis proclaimed Junipero Serra a saint in 2015 during his visit to the United States. He is the first Hispanic saint of the U.S. Just a few years later, however, as political and racial divides continue to grow in the U.S., California legislators passed a bill almost unanimously to replace a statue of St. Junipero in Sacramento, claiming enslavement of both adults and children, mutilation, genocide, and assault on women were all part of the mission period initiated and overseen by Father Sarah. The Hispanic Council recently defended Sarah, declaring... This new attack on his figure lacks historical rigor. It's also an attack on the Hispanic legacy of the United States and California, which must be respected and cherished, as Junipero himself represented in his time of dedication and service to the native population. Archbishops Jose Gomez of Los Angeles and Salvatore Cordiglione of San Francisco wrote a forceful op-ed in the Wall Street Journal. They said that while there is much to criticize from this period, no serious historian has ever made such outrageous claims about Sarah or the mission system. The network of 21 communities that Franciscans established along the California coast to evangelize Native people. We understand the bitter history of Native exploitation, but history can be complicated and facts matter. St. Junipero Serra's mission work was not easy. He left a prestigious position as a scholar in Mallorca, traveled to the New World, and was a great architect of the missions in California during his lifetime. And the acknowledgement that this man, uh, quite apart from the supernatural realities that he brought to the natives in terms of opening the gates of heaven, brought um, extensive contributions at, 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 at the natural level. Uh, uh, agricultural contributions, irrigation, crop rotation, animal husbandry, textiles, metallurgy, uh, tanning, uh, polyphony. <laughs> my, my personal favorite, viticulture. But this history, 
seems to go unrecognized as racial, political, and cultural tensions in the U.S. seem only to be escalating. Attacks on his legacy continue. Statues of Sarah have been taken down across California. Especially shocking was the assault on the statue in Golden Gate Park in San Francisco. Serra is taking the blame for everything that happened bad in colonial times. Assaults that scholars say are undeserved. This absolutely heroic man who, who, who just gave his, his life to his last breath so that people could spend eternity with, uh, with, their, with their creator in heaven. And Monsi, it's pretty clear that the attacks on St. Junipero and the attacks on churches and parks we're not going to end it soon, anytime soon. No, they're not going anywhere. And it's crazy to think that this great gift that Pope Francis wanted to give the American church <laughs> is being completely turned upside down. What can we do to correct this narrative? Well, let's go back to 2015 at the time of the canonization. There was a lot of outrage. There were a lot of complaints that uh, Pope Francis, of all people, uh, someone from Latin America, should be c canonizing somebody like St. Junipero Serra. Uh, and yet, uh, we're seeing today this escalation of that same type of thinking. What we can do is continue to get the message out, help people understand what the true historical legacy, what is the context of his time, and also to understand that uh, these attacks are both historically unfounded but also academically unsound. And then what can we do to really understand what, are, what is happening in our culture? This cultural moment is so weird, it's so bizarre that he would be blamed for things that he himself was fighting. Well, it's not exclusive to St. Junipero Serra. We are seeing similar attacks on the church. We're seeing similar attacks on Christianity, in which that which is considered virtuous now in culture mm. is considered uh, unvirtuous when the church practices it. For example, uh, the defense of women, uh, that the church is anti-science. So we're seeing this sort of odd mirroring of uh, fact and history. Uh, the way we can continue to combat that is to encourage our bishops to speak out, but also for Catholics to be speaking out, lay Catholics, scholars, academics, uh, people in media helping to get that message out about what is the true legacy, of, not just of Junipero Serra, but of the church in the United States and around the world. Exactly the legacy of the church. Well, we're going to do our part. Thank you so much, Matthew. Good to be with you.